Good morning, June 30th, 2011. As President Obama and Congress discussed raising the debt ceiling and discuss whether or not to shut down the U.S. government, I would like to return the discussion to the Pyramid of Prosperity. We talked about it before. The top of the pyramid, well, if it was a nation, it would be the wealthy at the top of the pyramid and the poor at the bottom of the pyramid and moving up, up the food chain, if you will. But this can also represent an individual. This can represent uh, a world. So let's talk about it at the individual level. Okay, if you look at that, we understand at the individual level, those people at the bottom of the pyramid, uh, especially at the very bottom, the very poorest, don't have housing, don't have equity, and they might have debt, uh, but it's often unsecured debt as opposed to the debt of a mortgage of housing. And as you move up to the middle class, it's often a mortgage of housing, but everybody has the debt of the nation. The debt of the entire nation is owned by the entire pyramid of people. But when we go to figure out how to pay down this debt, well, we must de destroy, de de lower the expenses. Okay, well, if we lower the expenses, we actually put people out of jobs, putting more people at the bottom of the pyramid. But you have to do that. Now, we could raise the taxes. That takes away from the investment income. How much can you tax the people at the bottom of the pyramid? It's very, very challenging in the United States to tax them. If this was a third world country, third world countries, the people at the bottom of the pyramid have no money, have no debt. Okay, in a third world country, the debt of the nation is the debt, and the nation has a very limited ability to tax the people at the bottom, and often the nation is all tied up and corrupted with the people at the top. And uh, I don't know how they are going to service the debt, unless they have lots of resources or oil or gold or copper, stuff like that, but it's, uh, it's a challenge if you're one of those nations. Now, if you look at this, on the global scale, you start to see, well, on a global scale, 80% of the people on Earth live on less than $10 a day. Some far less than $10 a day. That's $3,650 a year. Now, anybody in Europe or the United States would have a very, very hard time living on that. But the point is, if you look at our entire world, we're fundamentally, as a world basis, very, very poor. And even though even those people are at the bottom of the classes of the United States of Western Europe are at the top, they're above the 80%, way above the 80%. And so we have the wealth concentrated in the developed nations, tied again to currencies, but we, well, that gets to another point. So the problem cannot be easily solved because if you increase the taxes to d d reduce the debt, you choke off economic activity. If you pay down the debt and go draconian measures, cutting jobs in the government sector, which actually I could argue that there's nothing wrong with cutting the jobs in Afghanistan and killing in war, but the problem there is you don't have something to make it up for. And then the jobs, and then what, who's going to build all the arms and all the other things? See, we make a lot of money in the United States on war. And so what do we do when we start deciding not to spend all that money in war? And that comes out of the economy, but at least it's not growing this debt hole, which ultimately blows up and takes over the entire pyramid. Now, imagine, if you will, that this is a pyramid of the world. In a pyramid of the world... In a new world currency, we can change it in the following fashion. We take all the debt, restructure it, and turn it into preferred equity in the enterprise of Earth. And so you've basically moved that debt around. But then the other thing that you do, you see, instead of a world where all the wealth is concentrated at the top, what if we can create so much economic growth, and this is what we can do by doing this, so much growth that the size of the pyramid of wealth, see, the people might stay in the same 7 billion people saw about pyramid, but the size of the pyramid of wealth doubles, triples, five times, ten times more. And what it means is 
we can grow our wealth together with a better plan. Now, when you grow your wealth together, the only way to make it sustainable and keep this pyramid going right is not to leave it with all the poor at the bottom with no other source of income. And if they have no jobs, they have problems. And we need to create jobs, but we need investment to do that. Well, the way that you do that is you restructure it and then give everybody in every nation, not necessarily equal per nation because different people will have different places in the food chain. We're trying to build the whole pyramid. Give everybody equity in the entire enterprise of we the people of Earth that biz and let dividends, dividends from our enterprise start to change it. And then let's build our enterprise better. But see, when we're our enterprise is an enterprise of us, we are going to decide to give value to the people at the bottom. Not cheat them, not tax them, not hurt them through our commerce, but help them. And then the other thing is this. Imagine this is the debt of all the mortgages. See, in my plan, we move the debt of all the mortgages on Earth, and we move it into the Bank of Earth, and put it on a balance sheet, not, and basically take a passive stake of equity. So imagine that the earth, 50% to two thirds of the value of all the land of all the earth was actually owned by the bank, bank that issues the money. And all you had to pay for is the difference. Now all of a sudden, we have a money banked by an earth, backed by an earth, and as the value of the earth goes up, the value of our money goes up. But as the value of our money goes up, the cost of our real estate either stays the same or who knows, might even go down. It goes down immediately because getting rid of the servicing of 50% of your mortgage means you can live on half of the amount of of mortgage or rent, and we should get rid of the mortgage. See, that's the plan. So, but you see, now all you're doing is you're paying down that 50% or that 33% even, and you're still getting to control your land, to do your farm, to have your house, but the bank has banked your land to back our money. And the bank has done that same thing with the oil and the copper. And then we have the power, if we do it right, to monopolize ourselves. To say, listen, there's nothing wrong with a monopoly profit if it goes back to the same person, that same people, that ain't making the profit. And that's why I've called myself the profit of profit. Because what if every time you make a profit for the enterprise, you get one third of that profit? See, we can create a profit thing and you don't get that profit in direct dollars. No, you get that third of the profit in stock of the enterprise of Earth that pays dividends. You have this for savings investment. Why force you? Well, we're giving it to you and we're going to save you with it. So, it's not really a force, it's a condition. It's a condition, a condition to give you, every one of you and every one of your families, financial salvation from here to eternity. Thank you for listening. I look forward to seeing you all at the top of the Pyramid of Prosperity.